So today I'd like to talk about these two griffins that you see here. Uh, they were made for the Disenchanted movie and it was a group effort by a whole load of people and I just thought I'd talk about my small part in it and how I went about sculpting these. They were ultimately then fabricated or uh, milled out of po high density polystyrene foam by a studio and then assembled and you know, uh, painted up and made uh, look beautiful on set by a, a, a huge group of people like so. My part in this was very, very small, but it was to do the initial sculpt. So I thought I'd go through that process with you and it may be of interest to some people, hopefully. Initially, I was given this staircase and this is the actual uh, CAD drawings for the staircase. I just added in some six foot mannequins just to get a, an idea of scale. So this staircase was was where we were going to be placing these these griffins here. So I was basically taking this as a start point. This was made in April of 2021 and Unfortunately, my way of working generally for the last couple of years has been to not save undo history, uh, just to avoid file bloat because I tend to have very large files. Like so, unfortunately, I don't have a step by step, stroke by stroke breakdown of how how this was done, but I can break it down into the stages, and then hopefully from that you'll understand the process. So hopefully it's interesting. If not, I totally understand. Ultimately, where we ended up was this. So this was the the final product here, where the staircase itself was modified. Um, in addition to the base was was re-sculpted, the two griffins were added, and I'll go through that now. So yeah, this was the main dance area of the ballroom, and then these were the stairs leading down. Some characters were coming up from the top of the stairs and coming down and had to be have this as a nice backdrop to them. So the limitations of where everything could be built were determined by the existing walls, obviously. So that's why I was given this as a, uh, a guide to how far out the wings could go. Um, or not. Uh, so that's why they're in the position that they're currently in now to, in order to make sure that we could actually put it onto the set. So just to start off from the beginning. So this was the first stage. As you can see, very, very rudimentary. Um, it's just a simple Dynamesh. The resolution on that was um, 80 and I was literally just blocking out the very first griffin here. So I, I'm doing it symmetrically because I know I want to get the base forms right and then once I have them somewhat um, established then I can put them into a pose and then continue to sculpt from there. You can see I took um, the feet from somewhere else and they're just there as a temporary placeholder while I try and gather my thoughts. The next stage was to work into the head a little bit. This was going to be the most important part. So this head is still a Dynamesh. It's still relatively low um, I'm going to say and it was just basically sculpted just using normal sculpting brushes standard brush damn standard that kind of stuff and I'm just roughing it out and just getting a sense for well how does this look like what does this look like from various angles a few hours later I had actually started polishing this this is still the same day yeah this is still the same day and I had started polishing this and I added I used an insert mesh hairbrush to basically add in a couple of different spikes here and I polished all this using the same techniques that I use in my hard surface polishing tutorial with the samurai mask and you'll find that in the description um, and maybe I'll get a card up here if I can remember to do it. So that was me starting to do the head and then blocking out the volumes of the wing. So you can see it's very very rough. Uh, I've added a tiny bit of detail to the body but not really an awful lot going on to be honest uh, and the wing is just a dynamesh wing where I'm just kind of basically throwing some shapes together and, and sculpting that very roughly. So at this stage, I'm still just kind of blocking it in. By the next day, um, I had decided that I needed a base in order to help uh, just get a feel for where things are. So I sculpted this. This would have been done using a helix, uh, which was then uh, basically extruded out and changed using the primitive parameters. Uh, and then some sculpting again using the same techniques that I defined in the hard surface sculpting or in the samurai mask sculpting. I think, yeah, I still haven't even attached the feet to the body at this stage. So here you can see he's still symmetrical. I'm basically, I've now attached the head to the body and I've got some subdivisions on this just to maintain those features here that I had. And the reason I've got the subdivisions is because I'm now want, wanting to basically have attached the feet as well to actually get this guy in, into a pose. This for me, symmetrically, this is enough detail for what I want to do to be able to get the rest of the character done. The wing is still here. I haven't really done any detail on this yet. This is literally just me trying to find, just getting the body prepped for posing. 
So I posed it using the transpose master, which you find from the Z plugin transpose master. And that just allowed me to create a mesh and then pose that mesh. And then once I've done, send it back to here using the same plugin again, basically. Uh, so this is just me roughing it out where I think it's going to be. I know this is going to get adjusted later on when I have the base fully done. So I'm just trying to get a feel for well, what does this look like from from certain angles. And this is at this stage, I'm looking at this going, I know there's problems here. I literally just blocked this in, but I'm going to be re-sculpting all of these areas to fix this up. I just want to see what this is like in this pose. The next stage, I started taking these wings and started moving them back to see could I fit them into the actual set. And you can see here that I have some intersections and some problems with that. So this needed to now be addressed. Also the tail, I want to make sure that it's hitting the balcony or hitting the, the stairs at the right point. So I'm basically just trying to figure out where he is in 3D space here. The second character was done the exact same way as the first. Um, this is the only version I have of him. This is my first version. I basically took the head from the first guy. Uh, I had him in subdivided. So I basically transpose, used Transpose Master to get him back into this position here. And then I probably adjusted some stuff by making his tail longer, maybe tweaking some features on his face. Uh, and that's getting prepped for that guy on the left hand side. So you can see there's a wing here that I had from the other guy that I, that's still the other character. So I basically had them both in the scene at the same time here. So I hadn't wor worried about scale or position or anything like that yet. I was literally just getting them into place. The next stage was to actually scale him down and put him into place. His tail needed to lie on the stairs as such. So I was trying to modify that pose so that would actually fit that. He has been asymmetrical from the start because it's effectively the same body as that one. And from here, I know I'm going to be re-sculpting areas here as I go along and I'm going to do it based on that pose. So it doesn't really make sense for me to do a whole new, new dragon asymmetrically. So this is the end of the third or fourth day. And at this stage, I'm basically still trying to, I, I have a griffin here, but now I'm starting to work on the wing for the guy on the left, for this guy. And this wing was quite a strange shape. So I'm literally just blocking it in with Dynamesh. You can see that's actually very high resolution. Uh, a little bit too high for my liking now, but I'm basically just pulling out shapes and starting to carve this in again, using the same techniques as before uh, that I have in the Samurai mask, basically just blocking this in. So the next day was about making filigree pieces because I was going to work on the filigree that are used on the actual stairs and some of them potentially for the wing as well. So initially I got some models down off the internet. I can't remember where, um, but those 3D models uh, look something like this. Greco-Roman set from somewhere. Uh, so each of these basically, I just set them up so I could create a multi-insert brush from that. So once you've done, I'm gonna I'm in solo mode now, I'm gonna go out of solo mode. They're all stacked up, ready to go. So then you can just go brush, create, uh, insert multi-mesh. And that will allow me to just drag and drop these on to various places on the model. The next stage was to go back to this guy. And you can see at this point here, I'm starting to drag and drop some of these multi-insert uh, mesh brushes on and moving them into place. As you can see with this piece here, this is a very simple mesh. It's just a, a cube. And then I basically use the Z modeler tools to create some ridges in that cube and then bend it into shape. So I'm just trying to find that, that form there. So this is where I am after the first week. So I have both characters blocked in. I have one wing starting to get blocked in and I've started to add more of these, replace a lot of the Dynamesh materials basically with this stuff here. So as I get it in, I'll basically just wipe that other stuff away as, I, as I'm replacing it with, with stuff that seems more relevant. So as you can see, I'm not working on the back of this yet. I'm literally just blocking these in and moving them into, into place. At this stage now, I'm starting to take uh, an interest in the base to make sure that this guy is actually gonna sit on this properly. So I started making some elements like this. This again was used making the Z modeler brush and probably started with a helix and then basically started uh, using the Z modeler brush to add more details. I'm adding in some bulk here to represent some stuff that's gonna come in here later on. This again is one of those filigree brushes just made thicker and then distorted using a move brush and then a simple base in here. Not much else has really happened to the rest of the model. So by the end of the day on the first week, I'm basically still looking at the stairs and saying, okay, are they, how are these gonna fit? I'm looking at the wings. I'm adding a little bit more details uh, wherever I can. and just kind of just doing a quick check on things to make sure that they're fitting into place. So the next step was to start putting this guy's wing into place and having a look at it, as well as maybe adding in some of the 
temporary things that I, I'm just planning to use for the staircase for how I deform that and then maybe adding in some of these little bits here. Again, just Dynamesh, very simple pieces of geometry, nothing in stone yet. For the base on the second guy, I again used the Z Modeler brush. I made a very simple shape, something like that with Z Modeler and then just basically cloned it around and then pushed and moved it into place. This again would have been using the Helix and then using the Z Modeler tool to get that into place. So I don't have that as a specific tutorial, but we can do that later on if people want, it, so want to see it. So this is me now starting to look at these bases and see, well, okay, can I fit these in? Do they look right in place? And I'm gonna to have to repose this now. You can see I've started on the second wing for this guy. Again, I'm not putting too much detail in because I know it's gonna be fairly similar to the first, so I wanna just do one. This is purely just to see what this would look like and to make sure that these guys' feet are sitting on the right position. So I'm just starting to block in all of that stuff. So some adjustments were made. Uh, the characters are now sitting on the on the new bases or standing rather on the new bases uh, and I'm just making sure that everything's still fitting here and you can see I started looking at this a little bit more about how I'm going to get that get that done but no other real work has been done on the characters as such so here I have started re-sculpting some of the uh, musculature on this guy just to make sure that he's still yeah he looks like he's it, it fits and I'm going to be starting this guy soon as far as I remember but again, we're still looking at overall placement. If I bring the stairs in here, you can see I'm starting to modify these wings so they're, they're pulled back enough to be able to fit on the stairs uh, and to check that these guys they are intersecting so I know something's gonna to have to be done about that. So it's at this stage that I start thinking about the feathers for the guys. Seeing as we have them sculpted and it's all good, this is my brushes, these are my, my characters. This guy is now ready. For his main body at least not not the wings i'm going to come back to that but for the body it's ready to start actually having some some brushes on him uh, or some some feathers basically sculpted into him so and the same for the other guy actually so the approach to that was to create a custom brush this is it here and this custom brush is basically what's called a vdm brush which is a vector displacement brush and i'll do a separate tutorial on this afterwards but effectively what i'm doing is i'm taking one plane and i'm sculpting lots of different feather shapes into that one plane and these guys have a little bit of overhang you can see on some of them at least that you know this is hanging over more than the base which means it's actually going to cast a shadow nicely onto that base so i sculpted a few of these and then i created a vdm brush from that i started sculpting some more of the musculature for this guy just to get him up to the same stage as the other guy and going back to the feathers I created a lot more feather types. So now I have some of these that are basically uh, inserts, some ridges, and some of them are in groups just for ease of placement so I can do stuff faster. And as you see, as I go through these, they're basically just different kinds of, of feather shapes. The next step was to just add some of these filigree elements into the tail, into this piece of cloth that he has lying over him. I've only done one side at this stage, but it does go onto both. So this is just sculpted as normally with Dynamesh. The next step was to add in the second part of this uh, on the other side, which was slightly different from the first part. After that, I went back to the wings and now I just started sketching in a plan for where I'm actually going to place these feathers and the different, the, the different look for them. I have done some sculpting where I've basically merged this into one as a Dynamesh at this stage. I've done some additional sculpting using Dam Standard and using some of those insert mesh brushes, some Z Modeler brushes, and then basically integrating that together. And then when I look on the back side, I'm realizing I have to do a whole lot of planning here just to make sure that the brush flow is in the right direction for what I'm looking to do. So this is the wing in place, and I've done all of the feathers at this stage on the back of the wing. So you can see here, this is the front, this is the back. And they're going to be symmetrical, so I'm not too worried about it. Like, But the, these, this overlapping action on the actual uh, on the feathers here is done is actually quite easy to achieve if you're using vector displacement brushes. So that brush that I made earlier on, you may remember it. Um, the beauty of, of that is in ZBrush, if you store a morph target for where you currently are in your model and you drag and drop one of these brushes out, what a morph target will do is allow you to drag another one out and not interfere with the first. So there can be an overhang over one and the other. So you can actually get these to stack up like this. So this is great for getting uh, you know, series of brushes to, be, to play nice together and still feel like they're actually overlapping each other nicely. So if you don't do that, and I'll just do the same thing over here as if I hadn't done that, 
if I just do this the way I would normally, I'll do that and this will happen. I'll try and stack them up underneath each other and you'll basically, you'll get a lot of that. As Soon as I store a morph target and I try the exact same thing, this will happen. And I can stack them underneath each other and get this really nice layered effect um, of these. So I'll go over that in a separate tutorial, uh, possibly in the future. If people are interested, let me know in the comments if you are. Uh, also, if you want this brush, it's 840 megabytes. It's huge, but I can put that up if you want to play with it and do your own your own feather thing. Actually, I might see if I can, if, if the interweb will allow me to upload such a big file. So having done that with the wings and then placed both of them into, into set, it was now time to do the same thing on the actual griffins themselves. And as you can see, this is a combination of some of the brushes that I use, some of these ones with ridges in them, for example, uh, this kind of thing, and feathers that overlap each other. So literally adding them in wherever I thought it looked good. Didn't want to necessarily do absolutely everywhere, but at this stage, the model was also sliced up into separate pieces because we knew we were going to have to carve this in high density foam. So at this stage, I was cutting it up. So the plan for the next guy, who's a little bit different, I had worked a little bit more putting some of the filigree into his wing and changing the shape a little bit. Uh, he's now fitting the staircase as far as I remember. But yeah, it's in here somewhere, but basically I think it's now fitting the staircase and I'm basically drawing out a plan for how this guy's stuff is going to work because he's not using the same kind of, he, he does have some of the same kind of feathers, but some of them are very, very different. He basically has these tight ridges uh, around him. So I was making a plan for how that's going to happen. So I'm just painting that on. They were actually created using a custom brush. You can see here, I've used some of these same brushes that I was using for the other guy, added in some more filigree elements down here created that brush, overlapped it, tried to get the direction right. Some of his scales are quite sharp in compar comparison to the other guy who um, didn't really have these kind of triangular triangular shapes. So some additional ones have been created for that. So for this part here, for these ridges that he has, they were actually created using a separate brush. So this is the brush I created for the swirls. It's literally two pieces of geometry, super simple. It's literally this. And each of these are triparts because they've got three different polygroups. So we can use them to then draw out a shape like that. So whether I wanted the swirl in the center, if I'll turn on dynamic subdivision just to see this, or if I wanted it on one side, basically I'd do that to, have, to get it on one side. So once they were in place, then that was dynamesh down to the rest of it. So more work was done on these wings a little bit of tightening up and making sure that it now fit the place here, the placing. Uh, that may have involved pushing the banister forward a little bit. I can't quite remember. But at this stage as well, I'd also started putting some of the filigree on the banisters and then curving some of these banisters. So I took one of the original ones and then just used a curve, a deformer on it. You can do that by pressing W, making sure that your gizmo is in the right angle. So if you have a single one, press W. And then here you can put a bend arc or a bend curve to actually bend those. So I just bent those into place to fit the new banister that, that I had made on that side. Same for the tail over here at this stage, there's still a bit of a, an intersection thing. I think I may have worked that out at this stage. Yeah, okay. So we're actually finished here with the griffin at this stage, and it's now about cutting them up and making sure that all of this works for milling on the foam. So now is a time where we had to actually plan how we're actually gonna get these printed. So the actual characters themselves are quite big. So this character was two meters by, it was three meters long and two meters tall and nearly two meters wide as well, like as seen from the front. So quite a big thing. He had to be cut up into separate pieces. The milling machine cuts, I believe, a meter squared. So we had to cut this up and then plan how are we actually going to get this to sit inside the actual, or on the set. So for each of these, this one here, for example, there was a piece that's going to intersect that. And that's basically going to, if I go into transparent mode, you can see this is going to be the support internally on this. So we're going to cut this up in this manner in order to get that to, to work. I'm also booleaning out, booleaning out the stairs. So anything like here that may have intersected will get cut out. For the left griffin, we're also doing the same thing. We have some main supports that are gonna go through and then here are where his feet are gonna go. So if I was to take that left griffin, take the griffin, you can see that these, these supports here are actually cutting through his feet uh, at an angle. So we can actually put a rod in there and then that 
will stick, stick there and basically allow him to uh, allow these parts to stick together basically so this is as much support so there's various rods cut through him through his feet and through his uh, his body basically to make sure that these parts don't fall off and that they're they're fully supported so each individual baluster is still separate we have individual objects so they can be individually milled um, as required we have the characters the characters are going to be cut up into pieces and they're also going to have those booleans cut out of them the holes cut out of them at some stage like so at this stage we're just basically making sure that everything is prepped initially it wasn't quite decided what these were going to look like so we knew there was going to be marble stairs and then after that uh, what the griffins were going to look like was kind of up to the art director so at the time he asked me to do a few passes on this where i tried out a few different color schemes and a few different materials to see what these could potentially look like so if these were passed off just to help guide him into what could be nice on set and what would work and what wouldn't work. So eventually he settled on the gold, um, but these were a great help just to kind of uh, figure out what what was cool and what was not cool kind of thing like so. So for the griffin, we had to cut out the actual banister itself to make sure that this was gonna sit on it. So there's several booleans were done to make sure that the floor the stairs, the parts that were going to be inside the internal supports, they were all cut away from the original Griffin in order to make sure that this was going to work. It was then diced up into several pieces. So there was a lot of bullying going on here to try and get various parts to make sure nothing was intersecting any other part. These were then milled out in Odyssey Studios here in Limerick, who did a great job on it. These were then brought on set and starting to be assembled. Again, like I said, this is a huge team effort by a lot of people. I wasn't involved in this part at all. The drill bits don't have quite the resolution of the original model, which is something that, you know, you, you have to sacrifice just based on time. But beautiful result from it. And, you know, re I was really happy with the final result. So as it's getting put on set, you can see uh, these were cut out of one meter blocks and then they all have to be assembled and then hard coded and then painted and everything else. So this is a huge job. I think there were like 16 people or something working on this. So. Uh, this became quite the quite the thing. But you can see here they came out looking great. Some of these details are a little bit soft, but that's going to happen when you when you start uh, drilling all of these stuff out, like so. But absolutely, uh, really, really happy with the final result here, and they fit in the set as you can see, just about perfectly. I'm going to say perfectly. Maybe they didn't, and somebody had to do some jiggery pokery. I don't know, but um, yeah, really happy with the result. And as you can see in the final movie, I think they they turned out great. I don't have very many shots of them and some of them are blurry. So thanks to a huge amount of people who were involved with this. Gary McGinty who got me involved with it, Odyssey Studios doing the milling, Ellie McNamara who did some of the assembly and a whole host of people I don't even know the names of so it does really take an army to do this stuff. But that was my small part in it and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions just let me know in the comments and hopefully I'll be able to help you out. Alright, cheers, bye.